All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, this is something that I wanted to do. My sisters are in town. Um, we've been having a lot of conversations about the topics around um, social and racial injustices. And we've been talking about this from afar um, since they are here in town. I thought it would be a good time for us to talk about this as a group, as a sisterhood here, and um, just kind of break bread together. So. Before we jump right on in, I want to turn it over to my wonderful, this is my big sister, she's so amazing, I'm so happy, like she's like the smartest person I know, seriously, so, um, Ayana, next to my husband, next to, next to my husband, <laughs> well, he is pretty darn smart, but, <laughs> so this is Ayana, and hey guys. Can you, you want to say a little bit about like kind of what you do, and, um, I'm a social worker, um, and I work with people with developmental disabilities, as well as run rehabilitation groups for children who are at risk for um, homelessness, mental health concerns, um, being sexually exploited, kind of runs the gamut. Um, in conjunction with those two hats, I also am an instructor and teach and educate individuals who are going to support people with developmental disabilities. So she, yes, like a lot of hats, like seriously. And she didn't even tell you about what she does for community efforts in her in her community that she lives in, the city that she lives in that she's been supporting for a long time. You wanna tell about yes, that? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I am co-founder with um, a really good friend and fellow social worker, Shakoya Green. We founded an organization called Blessed to Be a Blessing or B2B support services. And through that organization, we support individuals, again, across gamuts, whether it is single fathers, um, people experiencing homelessness, children with developmental disabilities, single parents, um, teen or pregnant, pregnant, pregnant teens or parenting teens, as well as children who are transitioning out of foster care and into um, adulthood, so what they call TAG, so transition age youth. Okay. So, okay. That is my passion. Okay. Um, and so we, we kind of facilitate some community capacity building, bringing the community together so that we can give back to the community at large. Yeah, wow, wow. Like, um, so I thought, like, I think this is great perspective that you're gonna get from different um, uh, viewpoints um, different thoughts, um, backgrounds, and it would be really helpful for, you know, many of us who are sitting around the table and trying to figure out how can we support, how can we participate. Um, these kind of efforts, it, it, you've already heard it from Ayana, that she's been actively participating in how can we continue to, uh, you know, work and help the communities that are around us through some of her efforts. So, um, as my sister, I always am just so blessed to, you know, be in her presence because she really does encourage me to do a lot of things that maybe I would have been afraid to do, but she just does them so gracefully. So with that said, Thanks, sis. Um, I'm going to turn it over to my other sister right here. She's amazing too. So you want to tell them a little bit about what you do and what's kind of on your mind? Well, I'm the shy one, so I'm not going to be long-winded. I'm going to be really short. Um, but hello everyone. Um, so my name is Tania and I work in special education. Um, I work with children on the spectrum of autism and I provide one-on-one um, -on -one support for behavioral intervention and instructions. Um, Part-time I work as a rehab aide. Um, also with my sister supporting um, at, at risk youth um, in a lockdown um, facility. So we provide um, group services surrounded by independent living, um, providing some um, anger management processing, um, some um, array of um, processing groups. Um, and then on top of that, I support individuals in their homes um, adult individuals in their home who also have developmental disabilities. So that's what I do. <laughs> she's definitely the shy one, but I don't know why. Because like she said, she was going to be very short, but like even in her shortness, you can see the impact that she's also making um, to individuals as well as her community, as well as um, people who need our assistance and our help. 
Um, I look up to both of them because my primary core function of my job is in sales. And so I oftentimes think like, dang, why didn't I get into social services as our brother, our older brother, he's also in social services. And um, here I am, I, I, I'm in sales and I get a chance to um, impact the community that around me in the corporate environment. And that's what I kind of keep reminding myself, like what can I do to still make an impact and make a difference in the corporate setting? And so I've been able to do that. So. Um, I, my story ain't that long so you guys have seen me for a long time but i think this conversation is so important with the people that i have in front of me because um you know i don't know if i've shared with this with you guys but we're all here we're born and raised in compton um and um, we've seen a lot of things in our lives and uh, by the grace of god we have also seen a lot of really beautiful things and, and we are just so grateful for the upbringing that our parents provided us um, in the city and what, what people might say the hood, but, um, in that hood, we got a lot of values and, um, God just blessed us so much with the parents that we have. So with that said, I think before we get started, let's just say a prayer because this is a tough topic. It's heavy on many of our hearts. I hope that it blesses you all. And then we're going to leave with prayer and then we'll jump right on in with a few questions that I have and yeah, we'll get started. So let's go. Um, all right. So dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this time today that you brought us here together. Um, and thank you for allowing us to break bread with one another, that you gave us this moment in time for us to have this conversation, Father. We hope that what we're going to be sharing and talking about that comes from our heart, that comes from you, Father, that it would bless those that are watching. We hope that, Father, that it would um, inspire many of us to um, do differently or uh, take a step forward or, or um, you know, impact our communities uh, wherever you may be. And Father, we just ask that you allow our lips to move, but everything that comes out of our mouth is inspired by you. And we thank you for everything in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, ladies. So I, what you got? What what you got? got? So. <laughs> I, like, let me first tell you guys, like, this is how funny this is, is I'm like, hey, you know, when you guys come into town, let's do this. Like, let's go and let's like have a conversation. Let's talk about these topics that we've been talking about for hours. I feel like I'll call them up and some things that I'm not aware of, they've been like educating me on or things that are happening in corporate America and in, in, in my environment, um, I'll share and they'll give me perspective. And so I thought it would be helpful for us all to kind of talk about these things. So um, the first question I have, and um, this is an interesting question because this has been on a lot of people's mind and centered around like the narrative as well. So I want you to kind of think like, what is the narrative um, that we're trying to represent? Um, so my question is, what is your perspective on Black Lives Matter. Anybody want to take it first? Um, hmm. It's. I think that for me, it's not a loaded question. Mm -hmm. But when you hear all the things that people say, um, when you're tuning into TV and you're tuning into social media and you're having these dialogues with other people that it becomes loaded. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is plain and simple. Mm -hmm. My life matters. Right. Your life matters. My nephew's lives matter. Everybody around me lives matter. Um, I understand that there is a movement happening and there is an organization that when you say Black Lives Matters, the, for some people, the first thought goes to the organization. But for me, it's way bigger than the organization. And whether I am a part of that organization or a part of any of the chapters attached to that or not, I'm a part of the movement because I believe that my life matters right. and all black lives matter. Um, and in order for all lives to matter, which often becomes the debate mm -hmm. and in order for that to happen, then black lives have to matter. Right. All means black included. And I don't think that that's happening um, across our country. Right. And so for me, it's plain and simple. 
our lives matter, black lives matter. Right, right. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, like you said, like it being a loaded, like a loaded topic, you know, some people have kind of talked to me or like, I just don't understand why we have to even go there, right? Or you hear people who say, you know, all lives matter. Why do we have to segment out this particular group of people and say that black lives matter? But anyway, um, so some people are struggling with that. Um, not only, you know, our white brothers and sisters, but also our black brothers and sisters are struggling with that in some cases. Um, so, you know, I'm hoping as, as, as Ayana mentioned, just the fact that like, I matter, you know, my nephews matter, my, my, my son matters, my daughter matters, you know what I'm saying? So, um, what's your perspective, Tania? I mean, I, it's, it's exactly what it says, Black Lives Matter. There's nothing else mm -hmm. attached to that. I don't need to, uh, for me, I didn't need to Google search mm -hmm. the movement or Google search um, who, who are the founders and their backgrounds. For me, those three words, was enough for me to say, I, I'm, I'm on board. Yeah. I agree that our lives matter. I agree that my community in, in which I live that is predominantly black, we all matter in that community. Right. Um, we have uh, six nephews, well, I have six nephews, and um, their lives matter. Mm -hmm. And so that was enough for me to say, I didn't need to do the research. Right, right. Um, yeah, this question kind of came up because, um, you know, I've gotten calls and, you know, different but similar. We all born and raised in Compton. However, I don't live in Compton anymore, right? And I live in a community where the only black face that I'm going to see is myself for, for several days or weeks before I see another face that looks like me. Um, whether, you know, besides seeing my kids, but, you know, specifically myself, um, and even other women that look like me. And so um, my workplace is very similar too, where, you know, I don't have any faces that look like me in the workplace, um, not only with the people and the customers that I deal with, but also my coworkers. Um, and so when you take that into perspective and my coworkers are coming to me and asking me questions about, well, you know, I know that you're a woman of faith and I know that you love the Lord, how can you believe in this movement? Let me read a comment to you. And I don't know if you guys have had a chance to read through what's online. Um, I'm gonna read what I found online about Black Lives Matter movement. Um, and I listened to what my coworker had to say, but I'm like, don't convolute this. Don't, don't turn it into your own narrative. Don't turn it into your own message on what you think this means. I said, there's, in, in my perspective, and you know, I'm, I'm open to hearing what you guys have to say about that, but I'm like, there's three people that I look at. There's the, I don't believe in the Black Lives Matter movement or Black Lives Matter general. I do believe in the Black Lives Matter, or, or um, I don't, be, I believe in the Black Lives, I don't believe in the Black Lives Matter. I um, don't believe in what the website is saying about Black Lives Matter in terms of what people are trying to extract out of what the website is saying and trying to turn this into now, not the fact that we are supposed to be fighting for you know justice for all and, and e equality for all and, um, and supporting not only um, all, but specifically we're talking about the Black Lives and how we have to make sure that we are represented properly and also that we are being treated fairly and that our lives matter, what they're trying to change the message and the narrative to, at least in my conversations with people, is, um, well, as a Christian woman, how can you believe in this? Because online, it talks about um, people, uh, the, the movement is really to get people to recognize the gay community and for you to agree with this, and that's the message that's trying to be put out there. And so what I shared also is like there's a third person and, and I'll, I'll put my category, myself in the category of third person is that none of that matters to me. Mm -hmm. Like none of that matters to me. Yes, yes, I heard what you just read and I heard what you, you're trying to share with me right now. By the way, I do love my brothers and sisters who have decided, you know, who are, who are, who are gay. I do still love my brothers and sisters, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about lives that matter and Black Lives Matter. And 
all lives cannot matter if we don't matter, mm -hmm. if I don't matter. And so I think it's very similar to what you guys are saying, but I've had a lot of people who have come to me with this conversation that are trying to take me down the Christian walk because they know that I love the Lord. And how could you love the Lord if you agree with this? And I'm like, but I didn't say that I necessarily agree with all of this. I didn't say any of it. What I'm telling you, don't change my narrative. Right. Let's focus on the, the issue at hand. And I think that that's what um, the challenge is for me, at least for me. And I think that's why the, the conversation becomes so convoluted. Mm -hmm. Because we divert from the narrative. And changing the, the phrase, changing the narrative, has become so commonplace. Mm -hmm. um, I know in grad school, the, it, was a, it was a phrase we would use um, and we were kind of taught. Um, and, but that was used to to change how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are the change your, those that that concept was used to change thoughts. Mm -hmm. So if we want to go just real basic, I I don't I don't I, I feel dang, I wish I could go to work to I wish mm -hmm. I, I I I didn't have to stay home today mm -hmm. because of the coronavirus. Right. We change the narrative or change our perspective by saying, "I'm sure glad I feel better. I feel good today. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm sure glad I'm I'm not sick." Where we have people saying, "Change the narrative," in an instance where we don't want to change the narrative, because this is what happened when we change the narrative. We are saying that this isn't existing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and truthfully, the only way we can change the narrative of Black people being treated poorly. And they're not being equity mm -hmm. amongst black people, specifically because we're talking about black, no. about black Lives Matter, not to negate any other group right. or community. But when we, the only way we can change a narrative is to change that it it is not um, that social justice is happening. Right. In order for there to be social, in order for the narrative to change, there has to be social justice. Right. There has to be some equity. We have to recognize that there is some discrepancy and there's a disproportionate number of black people, particularly black males, who are being impacted by our society. Mm -hmm. Whether it is the education of prison pipeline, whether it is police brutality. And so then it gets kind of, it gets convoluted and, and and this is never to negate. And I've had conversations with multiple people. This is not to negate in our videos that I've been been exposed to and seen or things you see people post online whether I, I've had um we cut off just a little bit of what what uh what Yana was saying here and she had some good topics about, you know, just really, you know, not changing the narrative. Um but I think, you know, like what you're saying, Ayana, um, you know, and Tania started talking about this before we cut out, is, you know, she doesn't, she, she doesn't have patience. You know, you don't have patience to be challenged by, you know, your faith or, right. you know, with your faith. Um, and I think maybe I have a little bit more patience. I don't know. Uh, everybody has more patience than Tania. <laughs> Tania is has a very short, like, <laughs> nope, not doing it. She is definitely a product of cancel culture. Um, whether that's good or bad, I don't know. That, that isn't um, true because I'm very patient with the people I service. Oh, absolutely. Um, so it's you still, are. Well, now that you have patience for it, I probably don't have as much for it. Yeah, so, yes, I, mean, I agree. <laughs> I just think that there's some things that aren't even up for discussion, um, especially when we're talking about something that's obviously so dear to us, right? Dear to the black community. Um, and, and, and we're talking about changing the narrative and the people's perspective and they approach you and they challenge you with all this other outside stuff to kind of distract you from the real, the real purpose um, for this movement. Mm -hmm. And so they start to bring up stuff to then challenge your faith. And so we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna, we're, we're not, right. you're not challenging my faith, you know? Um, because at the end of the day, like I said before, this is a humane thing. This mm -hmm. has nothing to do with a person's sexuality. It has nothing to do with a person, um, you know, um, type of work or occupation or their involvement 
This has to do with someone, a person's, uh, a community of people who have been um, unfairly treated, mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, we don't. It, there's no. They, we don't have to dig for stuff. Right. It's pretty simple, and it's very clear. Mm -hmm. You know. So, and I think that happens a lot when um, when things are trying to be when we're trying to bring on change. We always trying to dig and find something else to to negate away from what it needs to be done, or or as they say, you know, we, we ask all these questions as if these questions have any relevance to right. what this movement is about. Right. So for me, you know, challenging my faith is not an option. Yeah, yeah. For me, and we're not gonna have that discussion. Right. And that, and it's hard because, um, you know, oftentimes I have conversations with people, um, coworkers, friends about, you know, they'll come to me and talk to me about different things or um, a lot of them are faith-based um, conversations. And so when, now you're coming to me now talking to me and knowing that what you believe or what you think is what you believe is right I don't agree with and so now I'm being faced with you know you trying to trying to steer me in another way because you done found pieces of information mm -hmm. um, that you want to bounce up against my faith and so um, I don't want to say that I've struggled with that because I, I believe that my faith is so rooted that it's not a struggle. It's just conversations that have stretched me a bunch, mm -hmm. has stretched me a bunch. And, um, you know, so it's it's been um, good and bad. I always keep saying, I don't know if you guys heard this for me, but I like God saw us fit in this generation to handle this Goliath. Like, whoa. Right. Like, where are the day take? Right. 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 Like, whoa. Like he didn't decide 10 years ago. He didn't decide, you know, 20 years. He didn't, he, you know what I'm saying? He decided at this point in time that the people of this world today are the people who can move us forward. And that's what actually gives me hope when I think about it that way versus thinking about it in another way. Right. So, um, with that said, 